to get Mikey. Yeah, he hates everything. Hello, I'm Mike Munger. I'm going to talk about classical views of fair price. Aristotle was worried in part about the problem of voluntary action, about whether an exchange would have moral authorization. Now, his definition of whether something voluntary was whether the moving force was outside the person or whether you did it of your own volition, which is why it would be voluntary. If, however, it was fear of a greater evil, the source of the action might be within you, but you are coerced by circumstance. There's two reasons that we might care about whether an act is voluntary. The first is that a voluntary act means that you're morally responsible. If it's something good, we can credit you. If it's something bad, we can blame you. Second, we can assume that in a voluntary action, the person must be better off. Now, that's subjective. It means we have to credit the person's own belief about what's good and what's bad for them. But a voluntary action, a voluntary exchange between two people, both of them are better off. Now, Aristotle does make an interesting point. Suppose that there's an external threat to you or to someone else. Then it might be debated whether the action is actually voluntary. The example that Aristotle gives is a ship that's laden with heavy cargo that's facing a terrible storm. Let's suppose the, the sailors on board the ship decide to throw all of the cargo overboard. It's very valuable cargo. They've gone a long way. They've spent months. They're almost back in port, but there's a terrible storm coming. Now, the cargo is heavy enough that it will likely sink the ship in the storm. They throw the, car, the cargo overboard. Is that act voluntary? Well, Aristotle says that both the terms voluntary and involuntary must be used with reference to the moment of action. So the man in the ship acts voluntarily for the principle that moves the instrumental parts of the body in such actions is in him. And the things of which the moving principle is in a man himself are in his power to do or not do. So, so far it seems voluntary. But in the abstract, perhaps involuntary, for no one would choose any such act in itself. I might choose to take a ship and go get cargo because I can earn profits. No one would choose to throw that cargo overboard unless they're trying to, to avoid a greater harm. So Aristotle says in that sense, perhaps the act is involuntary. Now, the reason this is important is that 1,500 years later, Aquino, the famous uh, philosopher of the Catholic Church, asked a question in Summa Theologica. He's interested in the problem of price, and he's interested in the question about whether commercial society is morally authorized. So the question is, are there sins that are committed in buying and selling, and how should we evaluate them? So he asks, of unjust sales is regard to the price. Is it lawful to sell a thing for more than it is worth? Of unjust sales on the part of the thing sold, that is, do I use my bargaining power to extort a high and therefore unfair price? Whether the seller must reveal a fault in the thing sold. Now that one's really interesting because if I know that there's something wrong with the product that I'm selling you, it's food that has spoiled or it's a car that won't run, but you don't know that, Am I obliged, or is it a sin, for me to sell that product as if it were good? And then fourth, is it lawful in trading to sell a thing at a higher price than was paid for it? Well, much of commercial society has to do with buying at a low price and selling at a high price. Most grocery stores don't make very much of what they sell. A grocery store buys things from the farmer and from the baker and from other people who produce food and cleaning products, and then they resell it at a higher price. Much of commercial society involves middlemen. So this last question is an important part of the moral authorization of commercial society. Now, it's interesting to ask, how could you possibly sell something for more than it is worth? That seems to mean that it has some kind of natural price. And of course, that's right. For Aristotle and for Aquino, the thought was things do have a natural price. But you can see, even if, you're, if you don't think that, even if you think price is subjective, there are problems with reselling things because there could be fraud. If I say it's gold, but it's oro de tontos, 
I'm selling a product that I know not to be what I say it is. They're also worried about the inequality of thing and thing. If I sell something for more than it is worth just because you desperately want it, that seems unfair. There could also be an accident. I'm suppose that I'm an art expert and I'm at a garage sale and I see this old painting and the seller says, yeah, that thing's weird. It's just a bunch of colors, but the frame is nice. I'll sell it to you for $25. But I'm an art expert and I recognize that it's a drawing by Vincent Van Gogh and it's worth a million dollars. Am I the buyer obliged to tell the seller, no, no, you've got to sell it for more than that. And then there are also problems of market power, monopoly or some other advantage of restricted supply. I can charge more than a thing is worth if I have monopoly power. Should we worry? Should we have antitrust laws to prevent that? Finally, we have a doctrine of caveat emptor, which is let the buyer beware. Should we have caveat venditor? That is let the seller beware. Usually the reason that we have caveat emptor is that we are worried about liability rules. So if something goes wrong, the buyer is the one who's acquiring it. And so we want to give the buyer the incentive to discover whether the product is actually bad or has problems, will break. You could imagine a caveat venditor. You could imagine a liability rule that says, no, all the liability lies with the seller. If something goes wrong, if this product is dangerous, then the seller is going to be responsible for any misuse of the product. Now in liability law, that's called strict liability. And it's interesting that the way that we impose the liability is going to change the nature of the very sale itself. Now, <clears throat> the key thing is that Aquino came to the conclusion that trading itself is not virtuous, but neither is it necessarily sinful. This was the moral authorization for commercial society that basically made Western society develop in the way that it did. It could have been different if the Catholic Church had not given at least a moral endorsement and authorization for exchange. So Aquino said, a tradesman is one whose business consists in the exchange of things. According to the philosopher, Aristotle, the exchange of things is twofold. One natural and necessary, where you acquire things for your household. The other, where I exchange things for money. Now, Aristotle thought that the exchange for value in use, that is, I buy something or I make something that I want to use, that is more always morally authorized. There's a problem with value in exchange, where I trade just for the sake of making money. Aquino acknowledged this, but said trading may not be virtuous, but it is not sinful. It is allowed as long as you don't commit fraud, you don't do the other things, you have to commit the other sins that we've talked about. So this gave the moral authorization to commercial society that resulted in exchange and fairs and trade being such an important, important part of European society. Yeah, he ate everything.